right, students, so we are going to build light boxes today out of cardboard and tissue paper and using some packing tape and box cutters or X-Acto knives and some scissors. And this will make a light box for when we want to photograph some um, product photography or commercial photography. And the goal of making a light box is to make a nice white interior where it will eliminate a lot of shadows um, and it works really well for taking photos of products. Um, if you want to sell them on Etsy or eBay, um, this is a really useful, cheap, um, inexpensive tool to use. And so what you're going to do is you're going to take one of the cardboard boxes and you're going to basically build the box. And I like to just build one side. There we go, like that. Doesn't matter which way is up because um, we don't really care about the writing. And then you're going to use some packing tape to just seal that bottom portion. Be kind of loud. I really only need one sheet, but you can certainly use a few extras if you're worried about it. Now, the part that we just sealed up, that's going to be the back of the light box. The sides will need to be cut out as well as the top. Um, so top and sides. You don't need to cut out the bottom. So just the two sides, the top, and then the bottom and the back we're going to leave blank because the bottom we're going to end up having some tag board in there and um, so you won't really see um, any of that anyways. So we're going to cut out basically three windows out of the sides of the box and again it's not really a big deal which way it goes because um, it's basically the same box all around. I'm going to kind of lower this a little bit. There we go. Okay so I'm going to start on one side with my box cutter. Now if you're really precise you can certainly measure um, the sides like if you want about an inch away. Um, you don't want to cut all the way to the corner or it's going to just, you know, your box is going to fall apart. It's not going to stay together. So we still want to keep the corners, but we want to basically cut a nice little frame or window on the side. So I'm going to use a box cutter for this. And this is the part where it can be a little tricky. Use some strength. Okay, so I'm not cutting, out again, not cutting all the way to the edge or anything. Um, Here's where you can kind of play around with this. So if you want to go all the way to this edge, you certainly can. Or if you want to cut these off, these extra you know, tabs, you can cut them off. I'm going to go all the way to the edge, so and I'll show you what that looks like. When you're using X-Acto knives and box cutters, you got to be really careful. Don't cut yourself. Make sure nobody's fingers is on the other side. Okay, cut that side. Um, if you accidentally cut too much, you can always use some packing tape to heal that up. Um, that way, you don't, it's not like you have to start over and waste a whole box. Depending on which way you're cutting it, some ways are a little more difficult than others. I'm gonna flip this over. That way you can see it a little better too, hopefully. So this is going to be one of my sides, or it could be the top, I suppose, either way. Okay, almost got this cut out. I'm going to take out that extra piece. Um, set it aside because Mrs. Quam will use your extras for our cardboard sculpture project in Art One. So we'll keep all the scraps, if they're big scraps too, we want those. So there I have my opening. Okay, there's the top or the side, whatever you want to call it. Um, again, it doesn't have to be perfectly even, so unless you're a perfectionist, you might want to draw your lines first, but mine is just fine. You can kind of see it there, hopefully. Um, these edges where the tab is kind of loose, I'm going to tape those just to add some strength. I'm just going to add a little bit of packing tape. So this is going to be a relatively large light box. You might end up 
making it a little smaller if you cut those tabs off, which is no problem. It just means that the products you choose to photograph have to be smaller. I'll take this edge. Okay. Now I just have to cut out two more sides. So I know it gets kind of old here, but <laughs> we'll do it. We'll get it done. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing, cutting a window or a door, whatever you wanna call it, on the side. Don't cut on the fold. Especially if you are working in a small space um, where you maybe don't like the backgrounds you have to choose from, um, you can actually customize backgrounds in here too. We're just using white tag board, but you can also use any kind of scrapbook paper. Um, some people I've seen have used like wo like a wooden patterned paper and so it makes it look like the photograph is taken on wood which is kind of cool um, so really good for different effects too it doesn't have to be just a white background all right so there's two sides last one this is where it gets a little tricky because it's starting to lose stability so because we're cutting out two sides it's not going to be as strong so just be careful try not to crush your box as you cut Okay, oops, here's the last side. Just realized I haven't taped these edges yet, so I'm gonna do that quick. Go back there. I need to tape this edge. All right, and then tape this edge. And again, that's just, just to add stability. It's kind of an engineering project. Making sure it's stable, making sure it's gonna work for your purposes. All right, this looks good. So we know this part is gonna be the top, and then we have the two sides. This is our bottom, um, and this is the back. If you wanna tape this, you can. I'm kind of a fan of adding tape. <laughs> I like to make noise. <laughs> Here we go, just to kind of keep it in place. Now we're gonna add the tissue paper, and this is what's going to be used to diffuse our light. And I'll show you an example of that later on, um, where we have lights on either side, we have the lights above, and the tissue paper on the sides and top is gonna to diffuse that light. So essentially what's inside here won't have much of a shadow. And again, that's a useful um, tool for taking photos of products. I'm gonna grab the tissue paper. It comes in packs of 35. Okay, that's what it looks like. I'm gonna move the box back so you can see the tissue paper. Move the camera down. Um, try to keep the tissue paper away from the packing tape until you're ready because they like to stick together and it's impossible to take tissue paper off of packing tape. All right, so when you unfold it here, you wanna be nice and gentle. You're going to take two sheets per side. So here's one, pretty thin, and then there's two. You can technically use just one, but I find that using two is helpful in case you accidentally tear one of them. Okay, so there is one ready to go. I'll fold those back up. the top first. All right, so when you hold your tissue paper over, you'll notice that it's bigger than your box. So I like to actually lay my tissue paper down and then I'll line it up so I can trace it and then I'll just use my scissors to cut it. And then that extra tissue paper, we can just recycle that. technically grab six sheets of tissue paper and cut them all at the same time save some time you know I just thought of that so that's okay be smart like like uh, like me and think of things afterwards right <laughs> okay so that looks good um, now we're gonna tape it in place I'm 
gonna start on just one side here. I kind of fold that over, make sure it's in place. And then I like to go to the opposite side. If you've ever taken an Art 2 class with me, you've probably built a canvas. It's very similar. So I have my tape on this side. On the other side, I want to kind of pull it, not super tight, but so at least it's taut. Almost kind of like you're, it's like tightening a drum. Okay, that's in place. And then I'll do these two sides. And this side. And again, just pulling very slightly, just trying to get some of the slack out of the tissue paper. And now, to make it a little nicer and a little easier to use, you're going to tape all of these edges so they're taped down, not going to snag. So I like to kind of take, take chunks as we go. And take the edges. That looks good on that side. And again, the tape just adds stability. This is always kind of tricky. The reason we use white is because it diffuses light. If we use black, black likes to absorb the light, and that will not help us. So that's why we use the diffuser. All right, and now I just have to do the last two sides. Bear with me. This time I'm gonna grab four sheets. Like I said, you can grab six sheets and just cut them all at once. That saves some time. I'm gonna grab four sheets now because I need two sheets again for each side. So two sheets for each side. We do the exact same thing. I'm gonna skip ahead a little here. Okay, so here we have the light box. All three sides are finished. Uh, so we have the top and the two sides. And then we have our lights that have LED bulbs. So these do not get hot. Um, these are the bulbs that we're using. And the reason why we don't use ones that get hot is because um, we don't want to start a fire. So you don't want to use regular incandescent bulbs, you want to use LED. Um, these are a soft white, so they're a little on the yellow side. And you'll notice that when you're taking photos of things inside. Um, but before we start taking photos, we need to add um, an in interior, basically a backdrop. So imagine you're making a little mini photo backdrop. And I will have all different sizes of uh, tag board or white paper for you to choose from and you might have to cut it you might not depending on the size that you get I think this one is pretty close I just have to trim the edge so you can use the scissors I need a scissors and packing tape You want it to fit inside. Oh, need a little more. That's pretty close. Maybe a little more. Because we want it to be on the back and on the bottom. So it's going to start up at the top. Yeah, that looks good. So it'll go something like that. And I like to secure it with something in there. So I'll just grab a little bit of tape. And stick it in at the top and make sure it's held in place. Um, if you accidentally poke a hole in your um, 
tissue paper, you can always just heal it with some tape. So just use a little bit of uh, the clear packing tape and then it should be just fine. Okay, so the reason we have some on the top is because we'll have uh, the classroom lights on and they're gonna shine down through this tissue paper and it's diffusing the light. So what I mean by that is if we take an object and we place it inside, it doesn't have that much of a shadow. I noticed maybe a little bit of a shadow at the front here, but not much. And you can adjust the lights around to try to eliminate that shadow. You'll notice it changes. See here we have more of a shadow because there's no light shining through on the side. It changes depending on where your light is. You don't want a light doing this, at least not right away, um, just because that kind of defeats the purpose. It's not diffusing anything. Um, but play around with the placement. You can um, attach these to the tables. Figure out what works best. And then when you take your photo, again, you'll probably notice that there um, is kind of a yellow or warm tinge to your photos. You can easily correct that in Light, Lightroom or Photoshop. Um, either of those will work just fine for adjusting the color balance. Um, that's kind of your main focus, color balance in this um, product photography to make sure that you're showing the true colors. Because this is a red dice, but in here it looks almost red orange and that's just because of the lighting um, it's adding that yellow tinge to it um, you'll need to bring in a product that you want to photograph something that will fit inside your light box if it doesn't fit then that again defeats the purpose um, we're going to take a few different photos of your product you get to choose your product as long as it's school appropriate and then we're going to work on Lightroom and Photoshop um, editing those photos to make them um, product photography ready um, with your light box, you'll want to keep it in class for at least a couple days while you're working on it. Um, you'll want to make sure you write your name on the back so we know whose is whose. And then that way, later on, you can take it home and it's yours to keep then um, for all time and eternity if you want to keep it. All right, well, thanks for watching on how to build a light box with Mrs. Kwong. And I hope you look forward to building your own light box and using them for your own product photography and have a great day.